ARC Radar has just released and I'm not only about to show you the best in-game settings, but also the best NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings with my own custom NVIDIA Profile, which is guaranteedly gonna give you more FPS on any NVIDIA PC. With the small addition that I actually have to explain the NVIDIA Low Latency Mode, because many people don't realize this could either give you a really nice input delay or completely break your FPS if you don't set this up properly, so therefore make sure to watch the video. Other than that, I'm also gonna give you all of the best Windows tweaks which you should apply right now to actually gain FPS. But you know what's also super important besides having really good FPS? Having low ping, and this is where GR Booster comes in clutch. You can try out GR Booster for absolutely free with my link in the video description, and all you gotta do is select the game which you guys wanna play, and then it's gonna automatically find the best DNS servers in your near, making sure that you have the least amount of latency. On top of that, it even features packet loss protection services, which are gonna ensure that you have no ping spikes. As mentioned, you can try it out for absolutely free with the top link in my video description, so therefore check it out. And in the first place guys, let's actually check out the best in-game settings in my opinion, which are gonna help you for a competitive advantage. As you can see, we are almost running 200 FPS and everything still looks really good in my opinion. Now guys, for the graphics settings, let me actually cover straight up from the beginning one very important thing. If you're using any sort of upscaling, these settings might be a little bit different for you. Let me explain. For me as of right now, I don't really like upscaling too much because it does look blurry in my opinion. And since I'm running a 4090, I can perfectly fine run this game on high FPS without using any sort of upscaling method. But of course, if you're running maybe a little bit lower end GPU and it does support upscaling, you can of course utilize this on something like Nvidia DLSS. And there you can put it as an example now here on quality, where it's gonna upscale basically 720 times 1080 p and make it look a lot sharper. This is an amazing feature as mentioned for lower end cars or even mid end cars if you're trying to run at least 144 FPS as an example. This is basically where you're gonna get the most FPS if you put this on ultra performance as an example or performance. Balance also, very nice FPS increase there and quality, this is kind of like the sweet spot, you know, where you wanna be most of the time at least for a comp game. So it still looks decent and you get nice FPS. So therefore, this is a completely separate feature which many people are probably gonna utilize in this game. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is, as of right now with my 1490, I'm actually not using any sort of upscaling. Now for the viewing mode, borderless full screen, it's even described by the developers that you have no performance increase if you put it on exclusive full screen. So therefore, I'm gonna keep it on borderless windowed. I could imagine the input delay is maybe a little bit better, but that's not even noticeable. So therefore, I'm gonna keep it on borderless. Now frame generation, also an interesting feature which does add additional input delay. What I'm not trying to do right now. As mentioned, you also need a more up-to-date GPU. As it already says here, a 40 or 50 series would be amazing. But as mentioned, frame generation, also cool feature if you're maybe again playing on a lower end card. If you're more on the mid to high end section, you actually wanna avoid this for reducing input delay, especially since this is a competitive title sort of. You're playing against real players. These things should be completely turned off unless you're playing on a 60 hot screen with like 200 FPS where it actually causes glitches on screen. And then the Nvidia Reflex Low Latency Mode for me personally is on On Plus Boost. Keep in mind, you're gonna need a very beefy CPU for that to actually work. If you're not running something like the latest i7, i9, Ryzen 7 or something like that, this might completely cook your FPS because many people don't realize what you're basically reducing is the amount of frames which are getting pre-rendered by your PC. If you reduce this from the normal one, which if you keep it on off should be free frames, to actually on plus boost, you're reducing it to only one frame being pre-rendered which is super CPU intense and is gonna cook your FPS by so much, where you might have lower input delay, but the FPS are so much decreased that it's not even worth it. I'm currently running an i9 on this PC build, so therefore I'm gonna put it on on plus boost. If you're running a mid-end PC, keep it on on, still better than off. Now my frame rate limit is set to 160 because many people have been reporting online that if you actually leave this on unlimited, you're gonna get stutter. And since I'm getting up to 200 FPS with my current settings here, I'm actually gonna keep it on 160 as an example, which is still giving me a high refresh rate, which is super playable and I'm not causing any stutter. I already covered upscaling as mentioned. Cool thing, if you're on a lower to mid-end card, definitely utilize this. Now my field of view is set to the highest possible, motion blur completely disabled, and now my NVIDIA RTX global illumination is actually set to low because as of right now, how I understood it, it also does render actual player shadows. So if you keep it on static, you're not gonna get that advantage that you actually see if players are moving around corners. I'm gonna keep it on low though because I don't really care about it too much, but if it is useful, it's still gonna work on low. Overall quality level on custom, of course, viewing distance on high. This is a competitive game if you can use medium or high. Now, anti aliasing is completely set to low for me since I'm running this game without any sort of upscaling and it looks completely fine and I'm trying to get the best FPS. Of course, if you're running upscaling, as an example now, um, you could experiment around if it actually looks better if you keep it on something higher. But yeah, for me personally, on low since I do just care about FPS. Shadows on medium, as mentioned, which I just explained to you guys with this dynamic RTX Global something thing, 
that the shadows should actually be in decent-ish quality so you can still get all the advantages, you know. Then post-processing is completely on low since you're actually just getting motion blur, bloom and lens flare. Don't really care about that, don't use all of these effects anyways because why would you want to have motion blur in a comp game? Textures on low, don't really care about it. I don't see them anyways that crystal clear that I, you know, should worry about it. I'd rather get higher FPS. Effects on low, reflections on low, foliage on low. This one is sort of self-explanatory even though if you're running a high-end GPU, why would you want to have more grass on screen where players can hide? This doesn't make sense. You're playing, you know, like against players, PvP. And global illumination resolution on low itself, in-game performance overlay, keep it on simple just to check your FPS, and then these idle energy saving modes completely turned off. And that way you already have the best in-game settings without a doubt. This is like everything you should set up. And of course in the first place we're gonna need the official Nvidia profile inspector. This one you can either google up or get with the link in the video description. Just simply click onto this first github link and then from here on we're gonna get the latest version which is 2.4029. Just simply click onto it then we're gonna scroll down and then you can see the Nvidia profile inspector zip file and make sure to save it onto your PC. Once you open it up with WinRAR or 7-zip just simply drag the X onto your desktop again. And this then how it should look like. We have the Nvidia Profile Inspector and my custom profile. For that one just go under Nvidia Profile Inspector, type into the top bar ASC Raiders until the X is actually marked and then all you gotta do is click on Import Profiles and just simply apply my list stripes one. And you can get this profile from my official discord.gg slash list drives like right now on screen just simply join on there guys and then under performance packs you can find it just simply search up performance packs and then i'm gonna put it into this channel here guys by the way if you're trying to download anything from discord this message always pops up because discord actually doesn't scan files which are zipped up in a winra as an example but of course there is nothing in my files you can even check it for yourself if you wanna and i'm gonna real quick explain you guys what are the most important options which you should definitely consider turning on or turning off on your specific pc because many people have no clue how analyzing actually works, that anti-strophic filtering optimization and sample optimization actually are both amazing features to increase your FPS, and many people tell you to turn it off somehow, I don't know, and how the low latency mode could actually completely destroy your FPS. First of all, the Nvidia Control Panel and Profile Inspector both access the same settings on your PC, the only difference being that the Profile Inspector is a little bit more precise, you have more options in here. You can sort of think about it, the Control Panel is for casuals and this one here is for more advanced people, because most people would see this and be like okay what are all these settings the most important one is now going to be the ultra low latency mode and maximum pre-rendered frames now maximum pre-rendered frames and the ultra low latency mode do the exact same thing the only difference being this one here is outdated this one is older this is gonna get overwritten by the ultra low latency mode and i'm gonna explain you why if you let's say play a game now and you're seeing a frame right now on screen there's actually already the next three frames getting pre-rendered that's the default value which of course isn't great for input delay because you want to have the amount of pre rendered frames as low as possible just to get faster pictures to your monitor. That's why you put it to 1. That way now you already reduced it by so many milliseconds. But what many people don't understand is that this is super CPU demanding. So if you're running a weaker system, this is gonna tank your FPS like crazy. You might have low input delay, but your FPS are going down by so much that it might not even be worth it. And this is the old tech. The ultra low latency mode now doesn't have 1, 2, all the way up here 8 as an example, but it actually only features now off on an ultra and ultra now being the equivalent to actually having the pre-rendered frames on the lowest one this does the same thing the only difference being that ultra is even faster the fastest possible in tech basically right now and all you got to do is first of all enable the ultra low latency mode so you have to put this one here on on and now you can change the control panel state as mentioned they both access the same settings so this one is going to change it as well in your nvidia control panel having this on on is anything between two to three on the maximum pre-rendered frames one and then actually having it on ultra is going to be even lower than one. So this one is super hardware demanding, but it actually decreases your input delay by so much. Now, as mentioned, you might have low input delay then, but if you're not running a beefy CPU, this is gonna tank so many FPS that it's not even worth it. So please do some research on whatever PC you guys have. You can even ask AI at this point, but if you don't have something of like the latest i7s, i9s, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, this is not gonna help you actually with getting better FPS and lower input delay. Just change this one here to the default one. This is anyways gonna get overwritten by the ultra low latency mode. This one here is from times from like DirectX 11, maybe even DirectX 9, and then the ultra low latency mode is anything newer in terms of tech. That's why the Nvidia Profile Inspector always puts these here actually above this option. Now next up, anti-aliasing FXAA enabled. This one is again a super old tag. But how does anti-aliasing even work? What does this all mean? Anti-aliasing is sort of a tag which makes edges around objects in the distance appear sharper. How does it do it? 
it sort of like blurs edges more or pixels so that it's not as noticeable that these objects are actually more pixelated in the distance. And now you have something like FXAA, then you have MFAA and MSAA. And FXAA is like the oldest tag. This is like super, super old. Nobody uses it off this allowed. And now MFAA and MSAA are more up to date. That's why I leave both of them on enabled and just simply application controlled so I can decide whether I want to use them or not. For me personally, I always turn them off in games because I'm just trying to go for maximum FPS on my high refresh rate monitor. Then anti-strophic filter optimization, this one you actually want to keep on on. The same with sample optimization. But these here basically allow your PC to render textures faster. They might not look 100% the quality which they usually would be if you turn this off, but the FPS increase definitely outweighs it. Now for filtering mode, this one keep on user defined, filtering setting, I keep on off because if you actually put this one to a fancier one, your textures are gonna look better. I personally don't care about it, how textures look like, especially in fast paced shooters where you just care about FPS. I know there are a bunch of more settings like rebar as an example, but this is only available for newer GPUs. So therefore you could Google that if you wanna. It's an amazing feature which basically allows your PC to use more VRAM of your GPU. But for most users out there, these are gonna be the best settings. Just simply apply it or as mentioned, you can import my profile and it's all gonna get applied. And now we continue. Now next up guys, we gotta apply the right power plan. So what we got to do is just simply type power into a window search bar and click under edit power plan. Then we're going to go under power options on the top. And as you can see, I'm currently running the ultimate performance one. This one is for higher end builds. What you're going to have additionally for more mid range PCs is high performance. But if your PC is more on the upper side, you definitely want to use ultimate performance. And if this one isn't available for you, all you got to do is type CMD into a window search bar right click onto it and run it as an administrator. And once this new window opens up, all you gotta do is paste in the following comment, which is power CFG, duplicate scheme, and then the following code, which you can copy from the video description. Then press enter and then you can see the ultimate performance mode has been applied. So now we're gonna go back into our window search bar, go now under choose a power plan, and then you can see the ultimate performance mode. So therefore always make sure that this one is enabled, especially on a more capable gaming PC where you wanna squeeze out the maximum performance in games. If you want to fully optimize your whole entire Windows for gaming, make sure to check out the video right now on screen or the one where I show you how to overclock your GPU next. 